everybody. Welcome back to AWS On Air. I'm your host, Shashank, and we have our customers here from uh, Aerospike and also our uh, head of marketing for advertising and marketing tech. But before we start the discussion, let me tell you how you can get a free NVIDIA RTX GPU. We have a challenge running called the Secret Ingredient Challenge, and all you have to do is by end of the day, on the link that you'll see in the chat, tell us about a startup idea that uses three AWS services. It's Amazon SageMaker, RoboMaker, and AWS IoT. So you want to tell us a startup idea, and we'll judge it based on quality, scalability, and potential impact. So this is your chance to win a GPU, whether you want to use it for machine learning or for gaming. Uh, and GPUs are hard to find these days, so be sure to participate. <laughs> you should see the link in chat. OK. so. Let's get started. So let's start with uh, my co-host here, Chris. You want to introduce yourself? Making my reInvent debut. I'm so excited. <laughs> my name's Chris Howard, and I'm part of the AWS Developer Relations team. Um, I'm here today uh, for, with AWS On Air for another industry session. So we're going to be looking into the advertising and marketing industry. Let's talk about real-time advertising, and that's something I've actually had a little bit of experience with in my career, so I'm fascinated by this. Um, it's one of the most high-performance, high-throughput, low-latency workloads there is. So I'm joined by Clark Fredrickson, as you mentioned, our colleague who's head of worldwide marketing at AWS for consumer industries, including advertising and marketing technology. We've also got Bill O'Dell, who's the chief marketing officer at Aerospike, and my new buddy, Angel Camajo, who is the director of product marketing at Aerospike. So welcome, guys. Thank How you are you going yeah, today? Yeah, so, Good. so glad to have you here. Yeah. All right, well, Clark, tell us about real-time advertising, some of the performance requirements. I know it's, it's difficult. Okay, so this is one of my favorite topics <laughs> um, because the scale requirements in real-time advertising and real-time bidding, ad serving are just like mind-blowing. So um, most ad techs, like an average ad tech, um, we're talking about processing in the ballpark of 100 billion events a day. Yep. Um, and, and that's kind of like mid-cap. And then you have larger ad techs that are doing up to 800 to a a billion to a trillion events a day with uh, you know, throughput per second upwards of 10 or 12 million. And then yesterday, we had a session with Amazon Ads where they talked about throughput in the hundreds of millions per second and trillions or tens of oh. trillions per ads per day. Um, so that's kind of the, the environment we're dealing with. And what it means is that compute selection, database selection, is really critical for performance and cost, um, especially when you think about high, write, high throughput and high write volume and high read uh, workloads. And so what are the common use cases uh, in, in the industry you see for databases? Sure, so um, in real-time bidding or, or ad serving, for example, there's a bunch of low latency cache use cases, for example, or low latency data stores. So customers tend to um, host advertising data at the edge to be able to respond in you know, single digit millisecond latency to ad requests or, or request to buy ads. Um, customers also will build what we think of as profile stores for consumer data um, and, and write at really high throughput there. Um, so you see examples like uh, in the industry like the Trade Desk, which last year presented reInvent, and their profile storage um, executes about 30 million writes per second. Whoa. Um, and runs on Aerospike. And so uh, those are some of the examples. And then customers will kind of build these multiple tranches of caching and, and, and data stores so that they can, if there's a cache miss, they go to the next one. Um, and it, anyway, so it's a very fun industry from a scale point of view. Yeah, so, and, and you mentioned Aerospike, and there are some guys sitting here with that logo on their shirt. Even a decade <laughs> yeah. ago, this kind of scale was unheard of, right? This kind of scale, like a decade ago, it's, it's uh, I know a lot of oh, our customers. Oh, definitely not in my career, no. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm not associated with this industry as such, and I, I, it just boggles my mind, the scale at which a lot of these companies operate, and a lot of customers use Aerospike to do this. So Bill, do you want to tell us more about Aerospike and how you enable yeah, your sure. customers. So from its inception, Aerospike was architected uniquely for very large scale, ultra low latency workloads that you would find in, in ad tech. So the real time bidding systems that Clark just alluded to is just one example of many. And what's unique about how Aerospike has gone about architecting the, the real time data platform, which is what we call it, 
is that we started at the hardware layer and built up. So mm. what that means is we take advantage in a unique way of the latest innovations in hardware, te hardware technology, whether it's core processing units, networking technologies, or storage technologies, okay? And that's very important, because these types of use cases have to be able to take advantage of those hardware innovations. So we have many of the leading hardware vendors come to us mm. and ask us to test their latest oh, and greatest cool. technologies, and we publish those on our website, you're, and it's kind of pushing a, the boundaries of these. And, and <laughs> they're yeah. like trying to one-up each other, and it's kind of cool, we've created this <laughs> competition. But most important about the architecture is how we take advantage of storage. And we call it a hybrid memory architecture. That means that we uniquely leverage dynamic memory, DRAM, and SSD or flash storage in a unique way. Essentially, we treat those two types of storage capacities as mm. a single storage layer. Mm. What that gives us is very fast performance and throughput, which you'd get in DRAM, but the persistence and density storage of flash. So to do high performance at scale, you have to have an architecture like ours. We also can store more per instance than anybody, which means customers use less instances for these workloads mm. than traditional architectures, which means less complexity, less management, less cost. And we like to say what we allow customers to do is future-proof their architecture. Mm. They can write their application at one terabyte, two terabyte level of scale and go to 100 terabytes and to petabytes and never rewrite a single line of code. So if you're an ad tech company with aspirations of growth, you can start small, think big, and you can grow into it without rewriting your application. That is a huge advantage uh, for, for us. Yeah. Massive. I, I love a good story when you're optimizing software with the hardware because you would have optimized the whole stack if you're pushing the boundaries of throughput and latency. It, yeah, it's phenomenal. I, I know you do have an announce, you, you had an announcement today? Uh, well, yeah, we, oh. we're really excited to, <laughs> to uh, let everybody know that we have been Ooh. testing now for several months, AeroSpike on the Graviton platform. And Ooh, uh, nice. we will come out to the, with that, cast, that uh, in general availability in 2022. The performance we're seeing in the labs on early code that is, is awesome. phenomenal. I mean. At a minimum, we expect a 40% price performance improvement over traditional architectures. And we actually expect we'll do much better than that. I don't want to pre-announce what that might be because we <laughs> still have some work to do. But we're excited to let everybody know that. We believe in the Graviton platform and all the advantages that it brings and we're excited to, to announce that today. That is awesome. So are there other customers using Aerospike? How are they using Aerospike right now in the industry? Okay, so in the pre-Aerospike on Graviton world. <laughs> yesterday, uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday, right. Yeah. Um, there are many ad tech customers that run on AWS and run their ultra low latency real-time ad workloads on Aerospike. So I mentioned the trade desk. Um, they use Aerospike both in their real-time bidding clusters as well as their uh, low latency consumer data store or cold storage. You've got customers like Beeswax or Freewheel, um, and integral ad science that are using Aerospike at the edge for their ad tech use cases. Um, and a lot of them, you know, in terms of instance types to get the most performance out of them, it, it depends on the exact workload, but we tend to see um, at the edge, like in real-time bidding, for example, or ad serving, customers are using um, i3 EN instances, for example, and, uh, and some of the new i-series announcements from reInvent. Um, like yesterday with Graviton will be exciting for that because they're you know, very storage optimized, for example. Um, and then for more CPU intensive, like cold storage for, or consumer profile type workloads, we see customers today like Trade Desk using um, M5D instances. Um, I think as, they, as we look at Graviton, some of the, like the C7G, I think that was announced yesterday should be an interesting thing to test out for that. Um, so those are some of the kind of the examples we tend to see. Fantastic, and and uh, you just told me before we started. Do you know what Aerospike is, Shashank? Do you know what it means? No. It is a a, ro a rocket. Apparently. A rocket. It's a rocket, rocket engine. Yeah. Rocket engine, yeah. and so it's a very suitable name ah. for a wicked fast database. I know that uh, makes sense. I'm wondering if there are any benchmarks. Oh, I'm I'm glad you asked because <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about this. I used to run benchmarks in a past life, so I'm really excited about these numbers. So we recently finished uh, a study on a benchmark with AWS for two specific ad tech workloads. That was user profiles and uh, campaign data management. 
So the user profiles, the, it, it can grow to massive amounts of data. So what we did is um, we put one petabyte of data and using uh, standard uh, i3EN24X large uh, instances with NVMe drives. So mind this, is one petabyte of data. Wow. We, we managed to do uh, five million reads, 100% um, of them under one millisecond of response time, oh. and uh, uh, 750,000 writes, um, with also 99% of them under one millisecond response time. Now that was one workload. The second, work, oh, and it's only with 20 instances, 20 instances of uh, the i3 uh, instance. So the second workload for that campaign uh, management is where all the finances go, right? Bidding information, budget information. So this, this requires a strong consistency. Mm -hmm. And mind this, using the same rig, 20 instances, running simultaneously. So we didn't have a separate cluster for each workload. Running all at the same time with 6 billion uh, unique registers, we managed to do 95,000 uh, reads and writes with 100% um, uh, response time under the one millisecond uh, threshold. So with this, we demonstrate that we can save $10 million over comparable uh, open source software solution, right? So this is incredible numbers. We demonstrate scalability. Uh, so you can, as Bill was saying, we can start small and grow big uh, with predictable performance and saving money under the one millisecond threshold. That's amazing. So you can save money for the people running the ad networks. You can obviously return ads, customize ads a lot faster, which is a better user experience for the end user as well. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so very cool. Bill, that was a lot of numbers, and I know I won't remember it. You have, <laughs> you have a way to share this with uh, our customers yes. today? Yes, thank you very much for asking <laughs> also that. Because if you go to aerospike.com slash AWS, you will see a special website that we have prepared. Nice. There's links to this study that we have published with AWS. Awesome. So anybody can, can go and get it and, and check the numbers. And there's some extra numbers there. I just gave you the highlights. That's that fantastic. fantastic. And, yeah. and if, if any customers want to see solutions using Aerospike, is there somewhere they can go, Clark? Yes, yeah, so if you go to uh, the AWS Advertising and Marketing Technology website, we have a solution with Aerospike that basically enables customers to uh, deploy Aerospike really easily with a couple clicks and a CloudFormation template um, and get it up and running in an ad tech kind of configuration fast. And uh, there's also kind of best practices from customers that use Aerospike today um, with, that are ad tech specific. Uh, so instead of just sort of a generic yeah. how to do Aerospike, it's, it's, it's really prescriptive for ad tech. Fantastic. Well, this yeah. has been really cool to learn about the changes in the industry since I was doing it. My <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it just boggles my mind, the scale, really. Like, I, I'm, I don't associate myself with this industry, but this is just... Uh, no, uh, but let me tell you, there's something else that we can do. Um, I'm sure that you're all familiar with the quick starts from yeah. uh, it where, right? Uh -huh. So we do have a quick start for oh, oh, excellent. So for me. You can, you, can <laughs> go, you can go there and we just, uh, uh, with a few uh, clicks, use the automated uh, cloud formation template, yeah. deploy an Aerospike cluster, and, uh, and start kicking the tires. Yep. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah. That Fantastic. is awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, so there you have it, folks. That was uh, Aerospike and uh, our solution in the advertising and marketing. Uh, marketing industry. Uh, I know Chris is an expert in this. Uh, uh, Clark, and Clark's the I, expert. I just find Clark's this. The expert. Yeah, you're all experts. <laughs> uh, no, I, so I, I'd like to just add that um, Clark and, and my team have been working for the last couple of months on announcing a joint solution together, which we did a short three yep. weeks ago. We just got an article written about that in Ad Exchanger this oh, week. Oh, cool. Go check it out and read it. Um, we are already seeing ad tech customers coming to our joint teams and asking us to help them build out a better scalable solution. Um, I heard that from both of our teams here at the event. I'm super excited. We are exceeding our expectations in terms of what we think we can do to help the industry out. So I can't imagine being with a better partner than Amazon on this. We have many, many customers that run on Amazon today. Um, and they do so because of the infrastructure and all the services that Clark talked about. So we're thrilled to be here. We're thrilled to be partnering with with Clark and team for ad tech, and we expect awesome. to see great results down the road. I love stories awesome. of close collaboration yeah. like that. Yeah. That's so fantastic. Thank you, Bill, uh, Angel, Bill, and uh, Clark. So there you have it, folks. Uh, that was Aerospike.